Um, and I've been checking to see how much power I get the voltage drop with the resistor um, for a load and without. And it's quite good. Um, my power has increased uh, exponentially as I've been testing. So if I move it closer, move the magnets closer to the coils, the power goes up uh, very quickly. And also if I spin faster. So before I was spinning with the four blade, um, it's bigger and it has a steeper angle, so it spins a lot slower. So I get a lot more power out of this. And I'll just show you what I've been doing. Um, my next step is have more magnets and more coils to get more power out of these, uh, these turbines. And also to do a lot of tests with the three blade um, because they spin a lot faster. So I'm going on milliamps, or sorry, uh, millivolts. I turn on my fan and start spinning. This is also um, way off. You can see how much the disc moves. So the gap changes between the magnets and the coils, and it quickly climbs up. So I was getting a lot of um, voltages around 500. So this is about the open circuit voltage. It's about half a volt. It's spinning very fast. Now if I take the uh, resistor and I plug it in, now this is going through a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So it's the voltage drop with a load. So it's just under uh, 0.1 of a volt. And this is only, um, I'm killing half the power by killing the bottom of the um, AC sine wave. So with more um, diodes, I'll have the full rectifier, full wave rectifier. So I mean, that's a significant um, power. Now for just a quick, quick motor that I threw together, this is all free, all parts that I had lying around. So the next one I build, I can make sure it's bigger. I think I might encase them in resin like a lot of people do, just to make sure that I can get very close to those coils um, without hitting them. Right now there's a lot of bumps that I can hit. And I also have to make sure that it's perfectly um, centered and balanced so that the gap is the same. So I just have two rollerblade bearings that I've been using and they work very well. So there it is. It's actually heating up a resistor very slightly now. So this is how my um, first generator works. Um, it's not very powerful, but I learned a lot uh, so I can build a larger one. And I'll have a how-to video when I build a, a better version. Uh, but the way it works is it has eight um, different coils and there's 15 uh, revolutions of copper wire that I got out of a broken motor. Um, and then I feed the wires through to the back and I connect them all um, alternating so the front to the back um, of each coil, so you have positive to negative, um, so you get the same current. And this is um, the magnetic disc, so this is the actual rotor. This is a stator, it doesn't rotate at all. Um, and this, with the wind uh, power on the blades, it rotates the magnets across the coils. And um, when a magnet passes a, a wire, uh, it creates um, a current flow and a voltage. So it alternates every time the magnet passes one set of um, one set of wires. It it goes in an opposite direction because these are negative um, south and north magnets alternating. So I take that alternating um, alternating current at different frequencies, which depend on how quickly um, the wind turbine is is operating. I take that and then I have a diode. So I just chop the bottom the negative frequency and I have a capacitor to smooth it out, so that's a constant voltage, and then um, I measure, measure the power. So in a real application, I would have a full bridge, um, full wave rectifier with four diodes, so I could um, convert the negative into positive, so I have all the voltage. Um, but I only had two diodes, so I didn't have enough for the full bridge. And I've measured the power here, it's pretty significant. Now the next step is I'm gonna build a bigger one with more magnets, um, and more coils that can get closer, but this was a, a great uh, project just to test it out. But it's very easy to build and you can use um, broken motors or whatever magnets you have lying around and then you can uh, generate power for years and years. So I took out this magnetic um, knife rack, so you're supposed to put knives on here and they just stick with the magnet force. And I took 17 magnets out of it. It's very thin, strong, uh, permanent magnets. And I'm going to use this with coils to create a generator for my wind turbine. So my rotor is complete. I put the roller blade bearing in the center. I have the eight magnets. And it spins 
very well. It's hard to spin with one hand. There you go. Just keep spinning. So this is my first test with a working generator. So I have my four blade wind turbine that I built with the how-to video. Now it's hard to see, but I have eight um, coils with about um, 15 turns. And I got that out of a broken motor. I took the windings out. And then I have these magnets. Uh, they're like this. These long magnets are very strong, permanent magnets that I got out of this uh, magnetic knife rack. And there's eight magnets. So they pass over the coils and then I get voltage. Right, so it starts off, it has two bearings. There's one bearing between, and there's an, another bearing in the front. These are both rollerblade bearings. And the, these are millivolts. They're climbing quite quickly, really spinning. So there's 10 millivolts, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, this is the highest it's been. So it's a very low voltage. You still have to remember that I'm only using half the power. Um, so it's going to be double when I use the um, full bridge. And also, um, it can spin a lot faster or I can add coils to get more power. Um, I can check the current with the load and then I can use a transformer or something to up the voltage if I want to charge something. But um, right now I'm really happy. I have a stable voltage. It's about 20 millivolts. Uh, also, there's quite a gap between the rotor and the stator, so I could um, decrease that, and make sure that nothing hits. But yeah, it's doing really well.